Well, good morning, uh, good morning, everyone, and, uh, and welcome to this first uh, webinar from Fern360. Um, so Fern360 is a project that has been running for a year and a half now, uh, and the goal of the project is to develop a training curriculum around circular economy in the furniture and wood working sectors. And the aim of this webinar uh, this morning is basically to uh, introduce you to the diverse, the, the different modules we've been uh, preparing um, for the course. Uh, a pilot version of the course will be launched um, early, later this fall, uh, but so concretely now we will uh, try to uh, browse you through the, the contents of each and every module so that you get uh, um, a better understanding of uh, each module, what is the content of the module, and so that you may be interested in, in later on joining the course. Um, so before we start with, uh, with module one, uh, which I will be presenting, I, I can introduce myself uh, briefly. So my name is Erwan Moisan, I'm the project uh, leader of the consortium, and I'm representing an organization called Ecores Best in Belgium. Uh, Ecores is a sustainability consultancy, uh, bureau that has been uh, around for about 10 years and we are working uh, around sustainability and circular economy for uh, public and private organizations and we are also uh, involved in several projects related to developing training content uh, related to circular economy. Um, so that's that's us in a, in a short, uh, in a, in a short uh, version. So um, currently we are uh, ECORES is involved in two modules that I will be presenting shortly. Uh, the first module is an introduction to the concept of circular economy and uh, the third module that I will present afterwards is related to circular business model innovation. Uh, but uh, to begin with, we can, we can start really with uh, providing you an overview of the, of the first module, uh, which is uh, called very simply, circular economy, uh, an introduction. So, uh, what's the what's the focus of this uh, of this first module? Basically, it's really trying to, to set the context of uh, why we are we are trying to uh, to shift from a, a linear model to um, a more circular model. So, uh, the, the whole point of the module basically is trying to understand. What are the current limitations of the economy we are both uh, active on, and try to see if uh, an alternative can be uh, can be designed, and what would be the the advantages the advantages of uh, of this new uh, new circular approach. So uh, more precisely, in terms of structure, uh, that module is uh, is divided into five uh, distinctive units. Um, the unit one is basically uh, providing an overview of the limits of the linear economy, why we cannot continue um, as such in, in, in our more traditional way of, of, uh, of producing uh, products and which very, very simply end up briefly into waste. So this is the first uh, unit. The second unit is trying to clarify the concept of circular economy in terms of you know, what, uh, what are the definitions of the concept, what are the principles uh, that really uh, frame the concept. So that would be uh, unit 1.2. Uh, in the third unit, we go a bit deeper into, uh, into the concept and look at really what can be the advantages uh, of applying circular economy thinking in terms of you know, environmental advantages, for instance, societal advantages, uh, but also uh, from a business perspective. But we also try to look in that unit into the, um, the, the barriers really uh, that so far are hindering the, the development of uh, this new thinking. Um, so that's for that's for unit 1.3. In, uh, in unit 1.4, uh, we try to frame the, the concept uh, based on the existing uh, theories and concepts that have been around for, for a couple of decades. Uh, circular economy in itself is, is quite new in, in the way it's been uh, um, integrated in business strategies, but it's, it's not new in the sense that a lot of concepts 
from which it's based on. I've been around for uh, for a few years, and so we'll uh, we'll talk about more. We'll talk more about uh, the existing uh, approaches that have been around and how they fit within circular economy. Uh, and in the last unit, unit 1.5, uh, we'll try to frame the concept of circular economy uh, in relation more globally to sustainability and, and uh, sustainable development. So we'll try to understand how those concepts uh, interconnect, what are the differences and similarities, and, and how we can actually have a better understanding of, of circular economy within, uh, within sustainability uh, as theory. So that's the overall structure. Uh, when it comes to the methodology of that module, uh, where we are looking at the training length around 14, 15 hours, um, it will be consisted of different uh, slideshows, presentations, uh, uh, small videos, and also a couple of infographics and uh, animation videos. Uh, so basically, uh, you'll have the chance to you know browse through the, the slides. Uh, watch some videos, uh, learn learn uh, knowledge through infographics, and also you uh, you get um, some reading assignments as well to uh, further uh, improve your knowledge on the on the on the, on the concept. Uh, in terms of assessments, uh, and if this is something that will be uh, basically happening for every module, well, we'll have a set of quiz, uh, multiple. Uh, Answers questions, and in order to be able to validate the module, you'll have to have a minimum of 60% uh, correct answers. So that's the, the overall approach. Uh, but briefly, I can I can <clears throat> give you a bit more uh, flesh on the on the content of each unit. So basically, the first uh, the first unit, like I, I introduced earlier, is related to the limits of, of the linear uh, economy. Uh, so, in terms of objectives and, and learning outcomes, uh, what we're trying to do here is to basically uh, describe uh, the current linear system and show what are the challenges uh, that are being faced from, from that system from a resource perspective. And so, at the end of this uh, unit, you basically will be able to, uh, to have a clear list of all the limits uh, associated with, uh, with the, the current linear system. Um, in terms of, of takeaways at the end of that uh, module, that specific unit, you will understand why, why the current system of take, make and, and dispose um, is not sustainable, that it's faced by a lot of limits. Um, and, and we'll uh, show that basically we are we're lacking efficiency in this current system, that a lot of losses are happening uh, throughout the, this value chain. Uh, we'll also highlight the fact that uh, from a business perspective, there's more and more pressure uh, in terms of resource supply, um, in terms of price uh, volatility, that basically uh, will force us to rethink the way we, uh, we uh, use our resources. Uh, we also, uh, in that module, highlight different uh, challenges and, and pressures, upcoming trends. Which will will uh, again influence this need to uh, to go from a linear to a circular economy. We'll be talking about population rise, about political risk, about larger issues like climate change, for instance, uh, that show that there is a definitely a need to uh, to rethink the current system. Um, and so basically, yeah, that's that's going to be the starting point from from the whole course. This this need to understand that uh, currently uh, the limits. To, uh, to our traditional model uh, leads us to rethink uh, how models and look at different alternatives for, for sustainable growth and prosperity. So from that starting point, uh, Unit 2 uh, is basically uh, introducing the concept of circular economy uh, in terms of definitions and, and principles. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll try to describe basically uh, in, in, in a simple way what is behind this concept so that uh, the trainees who, uh, who follow the course will understand the different pr principles associated with circular economy. Um, they will also be able to know uh, in terms of business examples where those uh, new approaches fit within the, the, the circular economy as, as a whole concept. 
um, and we will be able, in a way, to uh, understand uh, the differences uh, between circular and linear principles. So, in terms of definition, well, we'll have, we'll have time to elaborate on that, but uh, we'll start from from the the definition that has been um, coined by by Ellen MacArthur Foundation. So, a circular economy being a, a, an economy that is regenerative by design. Uh, which aim to retain as much value as possible for products, parts, and, uh, and material, uh, which leads to basically being able to create a system that allows for the long life, optimal reuse, refurbishment, remanufacturing, and recycling of products and materials. Um, so if you see on, on, the, on that slide, uh, this is the famous butterfly uh, diagram from, from, uh, from the circular economy. That basically uh, shows that currently we are more in a linear approach where we extract materials that are used to design uh, parts of products uh, which turn into products that can be uh, delivered by certain service pro providers that are in the end uh, used by certain consumers before being discarded. And the whole uh, approach of circular economy is first to uh, differentiate between the type of materials that are used. Uh, some uh, products or parts of products are made from uh, like limited materials that are uh, fin fin finite in a way that, uh, that are not renewable. So from that perspective, uh, we have to take a, a stock management perspective, uh, trying to create as much value as possible uh, for those materials. Uh, through different uh, feedback loops throughout the system, so that basically by sharing, maintaining, and prolonging the life of those products, by reusing, redistributing those products, by recycling those products, we have a better uh, stock management approach. Uh, but one key principle of circular economy is also to use uh, materials that are uh, renewable. Uh, and in that perspective, the whole point is basically trying to uh, create cascading approaches so that those uh, organic biomaterials can be cycled again several times um, and ultimately uh, renourish uh, soil, for instance. Um, so if you look at that diagram, basically we have like uh, a couple of principles that are trying to manage uh, resources in the most efficient way by uh, increasing the amount of renewable materials and better manage uh, finite materials. Uh, we'll try to optimize the system uh, as uh, efficiently as possible by creating more loops from a technical material perspective but from biomaterial perspective. And uh, in terms of Third principle, well, by having a more systemic perspective, we try to uh, limit the negative externalities in the system. So, trying to reduce uh, waste, pollution, and, and uh, green greenhouse gases, for instance. So, that's basically the, the, the concept in a, in a nutshell, uh, which we'll have the, the chance throughout the, the course to uh, elaborate further by really digging uh, deeper into all those specific. Um, unit 3 basically will uh, go a bit further and try to look at the uh, advantages and, and uh, barriers related to circular economy. Uh, so we try to have like multiple perspectives, basically try to understand how circular economy can bring advantages um, from a business perspective for the economy as a whole, but also from a, a more societal perspective in terms of, of uh, environmental benefits. Uh, but we'll also try to look at um, basically how, how uh, the concept is still facing uh, specific uh, barriers uh, and we still yet have to see its full implementation so it's important to, uh, to understand those, um, those barriers uh, to design uh, systems or business models or policies that are, are supporting that, that system. Um, unit 4, uh, we'll try to dig deeper into the concept by uh, looking at really existing concepts that have been around for, uh, for a couple of decades. 
um, so that for from a learning perspective, you uh, you understand more what where is circular economy coming from, and what are the other concepts that are part of the the whole approach. So uh, we'll talk about uh, different uh, other school of thoughts. For instance, bi biomimicry, which has been around for a couple of decades as well, and is trying to look at how you can actually uh, get inspired by uh, the way uh, natural ecosystem works. So that by looking at uh, specific uh, approaches that have been around in nature, uh, you can actually learn from it and design products or systems uh, that are by nature uh, waste-free. I mean, in nature, we have no such things as waste. Everything is, is, uh, is reused in the most effective way. Uh, and, and so there's a, a whole theory of, of uh, thoughts around that approach that has really been influencing the way circular economy is, um, is framed at the moment. We'll talk also about cradle to cradle, uh, that has been a, a concept around for about 20 years as well, uh, which basically uh, states different principles such as uh, waste is food. There's no such thing as waste. It can always be used as a, as a new input for, for new products. Uh, the need to, uh, to rely on uh, renewable energy to, uh, to, to develop the system and uh, the need to create a certain level of, of diversity in terms of, uh, of uh, systems and products. We'll also uh, look at industrial ecology. That uh, is also uh, a concept rooted in trying to mimic uh, ecosystems so that different companies uh, get interconnected and uh, share different resources so that uh, one by one side product from uh, from one company can be used as, a, as raw material for another company uh, so that basically there's also a circulation of, of resources that are that is happening in a, in a very uh, resourceful way uh, but we'll also introduce the, the performance economy. Uh, that is uh, something that has been coined by uh, one of the godfather of circular economy, I would say, uh, Walter Stein, that has been looking at how to uh, actually uh, close the loop in a way that uh, instead of selling products that could end up being discarded and wasted, um, companies can start looking at how to actually sell uh, performance and benefits associated to a, a product without necessarily uh, shifting the ownership of the product to the to the end user. So those are concepts that we'll, uh, we'll have time to uh, to introduce um, through uh, through their principles, and we'll uh, we'll show you examples uh, of companies in the furniture industry that have been uh, applying those those concepts a bit further. Finally, uh, Unit 5 uh, will try to reframe the concept of, of circular economy uh, in the whole uh, larger umbrella of sustainability and, and sustainable development so that you know that it's not a new concept in itself, that somehow it's embedded within the sustainable development uh, approach, but that there are still uh, specific differences uh, in the concept. Uh, but there are also a lot of interrelations. So at the end of that um, unit, you'll be able to understand, okay, where is uh, circular economy rooted in the sustainability concept? And, and you'll see also in, uh, in the coming modules that a lot of references uh, are related to sustainability and sustain sustainable management. Um, obviously, we'll have also some, uh, some reading list and, and extra external extra documentations for you to uh, further your knowledge on, on uh, the whole concept of circular economy. So you'll have a complete list of, uh, of uh, materials to read to, uh, to deepen your knowledge. And that's about it for uh, module two, module one, sorry. And I will uh, now uh, shift the microphone to, um, to the presenter will be presenting module two. Okay.
So Julio, you can uh, you can start with uh, with module two uh, introduction. Okay, thank you very much, Irwan. And just a question for uh, passing the slides. Are you going to do this or uh, can I do this? If you can do it, I think it's uh, it's up to you. If you cannot, then. <laughs> Ask me, ask me to do okay. so. I think that uh, yes, you, you, you should do, uh, you, you should do because I, I cannot do it uh, from my, from my computer. <clears throat> okay. okay. Just let me know. When, when okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, so good morning to to everyone. Uh, let me to briefly introduce uh, myself. I'm Julio Rodrigo, the innovation manager of of Zenfim. Zenfim is. Uh, the home and contract furnishings cluster and innovation uh, hub located in in, in La Senia in, in in Spain and uh, we have developed a uh, module 2 that I'm going to briefly to to to, to present to to all of you the the content of this of this module 2 as as you can see module 2 is about uh, circular economy in the furniture industry next slide please uh, the main purpose of of this of this module is uh, firstly to present uh, the current status of circularity in the furniture uh, sector so the the current uh, situation regarding uh, circularity also in this module we are going to 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 cover the main challenges and opportunities to circularity in the sector and finally in, in this in this module uh, we are going to present uh, the main legislative and voluntary instruments that uh, the companies can use to do this transition to a more uh, circular economy. Th these are the, the main the main uh, goals of of this of this model too. Next slide, please. As, uh, the the structure of, of of this module, as as you can see in, in the slide, it it this this module contains uh, five uh, different units. Uh, in the first unit, we are going to let me say to to do a presentation of or, or an introduction of of the sector and also a brief summary of the current status regarding circularity in in the in, in the sector in the second unit of of this module we are going to present uh, an SWOT analysis uh, for the sector towards uh, circularity in the third and fourth unit of, of of this module we are going to present the main legislative and voluntary instruments that uh, companies of the furniture sector can implement for uh, going or, or in doing this transition to a more circular economy and in the last unit of of, of this module we uh, present a compilation of some real case studies that shows uh, how companies are implementing those legislative and voluntary instruments previously presented next slide please uh, the, uh, regarding the methodology, the training, the training length of this model is uh, 11 hours and, and, and a half. Uh, in this in this model, like in in, in the other models, uh, we uh, the student should go uh, some some readings, but also some infogra infographics uh, and some uh, videos are uh, included in this uh, training material and. At the end of the the, the module, uh, the student uh, should pass a, a test of a multiple choice a test uh, composed by uh, twenty questions. Okay, next slide, please. The, if we go deeper in the different units of of this module, the first one, as I say previously, is uh, regarding this introduction of uh, circularity in the furniture sector. Next slide, please. And uh, the main purpose of, of, of this unit is to present uh, the circularity current status in the European uh, furniture, furniture sector. Uh, next slide, please. For that purpose, uh, we have, uh, let me say, split the content of, 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 this, of this unit in two different uh, chapters. The first one is an introduction about the sector, but also 
yes, uh, presenting the, the European furniture industry as a whole, the type of enterprises and number of employees, the type of products and main materials used by, by the sector. And in the second chapter of, in, of, of, this, of this unit, we go, we go deeper in the concept of <clears throat> circularity uh, specifically in the furniture sector so we present this this this, this approach the circularity for for the sector but also we briefly present uh, some uh, very important strategies that uh, are applied in the sector that are the cascading use of wood and the bio economy uh, strategy the, but in 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 in, in, in uh, let, let me say this we can consider this an introdu uh, introductory unit to, to the sector and also to the circularity concept next slide please in the second the second unit of of this of this module we present uh, the SWOT analysis of the sector towards uh, circularity next slide uh, as you can imagine, the, the main purpose of, 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 of this unit is to understand the internal and external aspects uh, to take into consideration in this transition of companies of the furniture sector towards a more <coughs> uh, circular economy. Next slide, please. Uh, this uh, unit is organized in three main chapters. In the first chapter, we briefly present some internal and external key factors that we uh, have identified for for doing this this trans, uh, transition the second chapter of of this unit is fully dedicated uh, uh, to, to to present the, the SWOT uh, analysis and in the last uh, chapter of this model we present the main barriers to circularity we can have uh, a more detailed uh, or a brief uh, presentation of each of these uh, chapters in the next uh, slide. So, so please, you want? Yes, here uh, we are not going uh, deeper into into this table, but uh, here in this table you can see the main internal and external factors that we have uh, identified and that we briefly uh, present in this. Uh, uh, chapter one of of this unit two of this model next slide please in in the second chapter we go deeper in this uh, SWOT analysis of, of the sector towards uh, circularity and as uh, you can see in this slide we are uh, presenting the, the the strengths and the weaknesses that we have identified as, as you can see at least more than six uh, items per, per, per each uh, categories of this uh, SWOT analysis uh, we have already identified and in the report you have a brief uh, presentation and discussion of each of these topics of strengths and uh, weakness. If we go to the to the next slide, you can also see here the opportunities and the threats that we have uh, also identified and that we are uh, presenting and discussing in in this in this uh, chapter two. And in the next slide, you. Uh, can see the, the barriers, the, the main barriers that we have identified in doing this uh, transition of, of, of companies towards a more circular economy. And if I'm not wrong, we have identified uh, almost 10 uh, key barriers that uh, they are also discussed and, and presented in this last uh, chapter. In the third uh, uh, unit of this report, we have identified the main legislative instruments that we are that we consider that they are going to 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 impact to influence this uh, transition of companies towards a more circular economy so as you can see in the next slide uh, and, and uh, as you can imagine the main purpose of of this unit is to understand the the main legislative instruments that uh, are going to facilitate or to force this uh, transition of companies, in that case of the furniture sector, to a more circular uh, economy. Uh, in the next slide, uh, here you can see the 12 instruments that we have 
identified uh, as uh, key uh, instruments for uh, the furniture sector and we are uh, presenting all of them in uh, this uh, unit three of uh, the, the the report okay and uh, in in the fourth unit of, of 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 this module we in that case present the voluntary instruments so in other words those instruments that the companies can uh, implement on voluntary basis in order to do this uh, transition towards a more uh, circular uh, economy in the next slide yes i have already commented which is the the, the main objective of, of of this model to know these voluntary instruments that some companies are uh, using in doing this this transition and if we go to to the next slide we can see which uh, instruments which voluntary instruments we are covering and presenting in this uh, model as you can see we have identified six uh, voluntary instruments that they are of uh, high relevance for the furniture uh, for the furniture uh, sector okay and finally in in the last uh, unit of this module two uh, this this model contains a compilation of uh, case studies or let me or, or in other or, or in other words uh, examples of how real uh, companies are implementing some of the previous uh, legislative or uh, voluntary instruments so if in in the next slide you can see uh, these are the legislative or the case studies regarding legislative instruments that we are presenting in this in this chapter uh, around uh, 10 examples showing clearly how these uh, legislative instruments are currently deployed and implemented at uh, administration level and also at a company at a company level and finally in the last part of, of this of, of this uh, unit, you can see here uh, some uh, uh, some real examples of companies who are implementing uh, some of the uh, previously mentioned uh, voluntary uh, instruments. Again, uh, it's a compilation of let me say at around uh, uh, ten uh, real. Uh, case studies implementing uh, some of the of the voluntary instruments and if i'm not wrong this is all the content that uh, we have included in this uh, module two and as you can see the the the, the, the purpose of, of 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 this module was as i said previously to uh, know the current situation regarding the circular economy and also to know the main or the key uh, legislative and voluntary instruments that uh, companies can uh, apply for doing this uh, transition or this real transition towards a more uh, circular economy. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Julio. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll then switch to uh, module three, uh, which is focusing on business model innovation um, in a circular economy. And this is also a module that has been developed uh, by TechOS. Uh, so the, the focus of that module is, uh, is learn more about uh, what do we mean by, by business model and, and, and business model innovation, and, and more concretely uh, frame this type of business model innovation in the, in the circular economy uh, context. So in terms of structure, we have uh, six units. Uh, the first one is, is really focusing on, on, on business model uh, knowledge uh, in general. What, what do we mean by business model and why it's relevant to, uh, to think innovation in terms of business model and not only uh, look at innovation in terms of technology, for instance. Um, we go in, in units 3.2 in, into framing circular business models as a, a subset of sustainable business models. So we'll, uh, we'll try to explain you um, what is actually a, a, sustainable, a sustainable business model, how it differs from, from generic business models, 
and and uh, and we show you that yes, yeah, circular economy business models are parts of this, this larger set of, of sustainable business models. Um, in Unit 3.3, we'll uh, we'll go a bit deeper again into the into the content. Uh, we'll try to, to to clarify circular business models, and we we look at the key principles that define and characterize circular business models. Uh, in 3.4, we'll uh, we'll go um, a, a bit deeper again, and we'll basically brought through brought you through different strategies uh, that make business model more circular. We provide you different uh, examples of companies uh, throughout the world who have been implementing and specific sector economy strategies in their in their business model. In Unit 3.5, um, again we'll 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 really try we'll try to to uh, browse you through uh, to, through case studies. Again, I think this is the, the best way to learn about about uh, circular economy and circular business models uh, in practical matters. Just to show you how how uh, a lot of companies in Europe who are involved in the sector have been applying different uh, strategies to make their, their business model circular. And finally, in uh, Unit 3.6, uh, we'll show you uh, one tool, we'll introduce you to one tool that can help you uh, start with uh, finding new value propositions, new strategies to actually become more circular. So that's, uh, that's the overall structure of the, of the module. Uh, training length will be about 19 hours. Uh, and again, we'll have uh, we'll have infographics, videos, uh, different PowerPoint presentations, and uh, at the end of the module, you'll be assessed to uh, to some quiz to validate or not if you have been learning uh, what we want you to learn. But briefly, in terms of uh, in terms of units, so the first unit uh, basically will introduce you to the principles and definitions of uh, of business models. So uh, this is, you know, to start with, you need to understand uh, and have basic knowledge about what is a business model, um, and you'll be able to understand, you know, specific mechanism to create, deliver, and capture value in, a, in an innovative way. Um, for that module, we'll uh, we'll introduce you to some tools as well that are um, able to help you frame uh, your business model. Uh, we'll be using business model canvas as a as a theoretical background, which is basically a map of the different blocks uh, that constitute a business model, uh, centered around a, a value proposition. So basically, uh, some sentence that uh, clarifies and summarizes what are the benefits associated to your uh, to your products or services from from your uh, end user perspective. Uh, we look also at how you create value in terms of activity, activities and resources and, and partnerships that support you in creating value. Uh, we'll also basically clarify uh, the right part of the, of the canvas related to how you deliver value to your customer, who are your customers, what are the channels you use to, uh, to deliver that value, what kind of customer relationships that you uh, develop to make sure that uh, your your business model is relevant, and uh, we also look at uh, basically uh, examples of how uh, value is captured in your business model. So, what is the cost structure? What are the revenue streams? What are the different options that you can implement uh, to make your your business model uh, successful? Uh, through that um, module, we also uh, show you different ways to innovate uh, with your business models. So uh, in that unit, we'll not, we will not directly uh, use examples from the furniture industry. We'll try to be more wide to show you that there's a, a variety of approaches to, uh, to innovate with business models. But we will we'll obviously link it uh, afterwards to uh, specific strategies that uh, furniture uh, businesses can, can learn from uh, other, other key examples in, uh, in, in the industry. So this is going to be just a general introduction to business model, uh, and then obviously afterwards we will be deeper into uh, sustainable and, and circular business models. So in Unit Two, uh, we we clarify how those uh, sustainable business models in general are different from uh, from uh, traditional business models, and we try to position circular economy business models within that. 
Um, so we clarify indeed the connection between sustainable business models and circular business models. We show that sustainability can be a driver for business model innovation. Uh, and, and we show exactly you know, <coughs> what kind of, of circular <coughs> business models we're talking about. Um, so briefly, in terms of, of uh, theory around sustainable, sustainable business model, we'll again start from, from the type of canvas that has been presented earlier. But we show that uh, the value proposition of sustainable business model goes a bit beyond uh, profit making from, from a company perspective, but looks at how the business model can actually uh, create positive impacts uh, for different layers of society, uh, but also create positive impacts uh, for the environment. So uh, a value proposition that is generally you know, adapted to different multiple stakeholders uh, that has a, a purpose that goes beyond profit, but that has a purpose that is also uh, towards uh, environmental friendly products or services that also can support uh, equality and fairness uh, with people. Uh, so those sustainable business models uh, can actually and, and are being categorized in different type of, of uh, subcategories. So we'll have the chance to, uh, to uh, frame uh, those different business models <coughs> uh, in terms of you know, technological uh, aspect, social aspect, organizational aspect. And uh, through those approaches, we can define different archety archetypes of business models that try to focus on specific uh, business model approaches. Uh, with different examples, and so uh, at the end of that module, I, I hope you get a, a clearer view of, of where your future business model, uh, circular business model, can be uh, placed uh, around this variety of, of, of archetypes. Um, but unit three will we, uh, go a bit further in trying to uh, to define principles of, of circular business models and trying to, uh, to characterize those, those business models so that you understand that at the end of the module, you know, what could make your business model uh, circular economy fit, I would say. And try to understand how value creation mechanisms are, are uh, being implemented in this type of approaches. <coughs> so obviously, we'll start with, with the current business model, circular business model definitions that are out there in the, in the literature. Uh, and we'll try to look at uh, specific principles that really characterize circular business models, uh, where value creation is, is uh, designed by using specific materials that are renewable, uh, recyclable, by developing <coughs> strategies that reduce the flow of resources uh, that are uh, circulating in the systems, for instance, by creating uh, high quality material that can be used for a longer time. Um, but we look also at principles that aim at slowing, slowing um, resources loop, for instance, by creating uh, in, inner loops by reusing or repairing or refurbishing specific products. Uh, we look at different uh, categories of business models that look at intensifying the use of specific products, for instance, through specific uh, platforms <coughs> that maximize the, the usage of products. We looked at principles also uh, focusing on dematerializing um, value creation so that you can actually uh, create value but not necessarily by coupling it with material use. So this, those are different principles. We we'll use that uh, also a cascading principle so that how can we create multiple value from the same type of resources or different lifetimes, and obviously we also look at the closing loop principles that aim to uh, reuse uh, materials and products at the end of life to create new products. So once we have an, a clear understanding of those definitions and those principles, then we, uh, in Unit 4, we'll try to go a bit deeper in terms of strategies. Uh, and you will get, at the end of that uh, unit, uh, a clear systematic overview of all the different strategies that you can implement uh, when you are operating in the furniture industry and you want to, uh, to become more circular. So you get that exhaustive view and you can start uh, identifying uh, specific starting points 
uh, in your industry to, uh, to, to create those kind of, of business models. So as an example, uh, here in that slide we have type of short loop strategies where you can uh, create value from developing, for instance, long-lasting products or um, base your value creation on developing services that extend the life of the product through maintenance or repair or upgrading or, for instance, uh, looking at remanufacturing or refurbishing approaches. Um, in Unit 5, um, again, we, we think that learning from existing cases is the best way to, uh, to uh, have clear examples on what to do to, uh, to implement uh, certain recommended strategies. So in that unit, we'll, uh, we'll get some more in-depth understanding of circular business models through, uh, through uh, case studies. Um, so we'll have several case studies that we'll introduce you to through, uh, through text and, and videos and so that you get a, a better understanding on how they uh, designed their business models and, and how they created new value propositions that are uh, successful on the market. Finally, uh, in Unit 6, um, we will introduce you to uh, a tool that can help you to actually, from starting from uh, an initial value proposition, we can look at uh, different strategies to map new value creation opportunities, um, so that you get actually more in-depth knowledge on how to implement these type of strategies uh, if you're working already in a company or if you're later on working in the company, you'll get some kind of hand, hand on tool to, uh, to start playing with this type of, of business model innovation. So we'll introduce you to the value mapping tool, which is a, a tool that tries to identify uh, if there is in your current value proposition certain aspects where actually you have value destroyed or value missed. And starting from that, uh, you can actually create new opportunities for, for new value creation. But that, uh, that specific unit will introduce you to the tool and through example show you how you can uh, change your business model, innovate with your business model by applying those circular economy principles. Uh, again, we'll have uh, some external uh, additional reading material for you to understand a bit further how to uh, implement circular business models uh, in your uh, in your uh, company or in, in the industry in general, uh, and so that that type of material will help you uh, deepen your your knowledge on circular business models. And that's about it for module three. Uh, we'll be able now to uh, switch to module four. Which is presenting by the University of Baza. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Arthur Ayala. I'm working here at the University of Baza, School of Marketing and Communication. And I've been uh, doing research on, on business networks and, and business to business market, marketing specifically. Uh, but these models, we are uh, in charge of the model 4 and then the model uh, 6, specifically in the model 6, we also focus on, on some consumer marketing type of aspects. But uh, we start with the model 4, that's about business management in circular furniture industry. Uh, this model consists of two units, uh, sorry, for the, that first of the focus. Uh, here our aim is to look at the tools and applications that are currently used uh, to promote sustainability in the circular furniture industry. So we have some general models and approaches which we then are going to apply in this specific sector. And the model con oh, sorry. Model consists of two units. The first one creating and managing circular value networks, which is my responsibility in this model, and, and the second one, entrepreneurship for circular economy, which my colleague uh, Nicoletta will, will tell about more. This box is not really working well. I have to use the paper. Okay, 
the was we have thought about the methodological aspect, so the methodological approach, uh, which we have decided already is important, mainly for the presentation and the reading material, course book, and then uh, some extra reading readings for both units. And uh, the length of these units we expect to be about 10 hours, uh, uh, 4 hours for the first unit and, and, and 6 hours for, for the second unit. An assessment, uh, there might be what we have been thought of, <coughs> the quiz which uh, already have been presented here uh, with 20, 20 plus questions and, and the 60% uh, pass, 60% uh, of, of uh, correct answers to pass that uh, unit. But also might be a way to look at some kind of self-assessment, uh, uh, self-assessment uh, uh, ways or, or to, to look at what, how much they actually know about, for example, the entrepreneurship and before when they start or when they start and afterwards when they have uh, finalized the, the, the unit. But that's, let's talk about later perhaps on that. So the first unit is about creating and managing circular value networks. And here I'm going to focus, we're going to focus on, on what the value actually is about, how the value networks are, are established, and what kind of models you have there. This is a bit continuing what, the, what Ervano told already about the business models and the value creation in, in the Model 3. <coughs> uh, and uh, after the unit, uh, after a pilot in the unit, we expect that the training can apply network approach and use the value system for analyzing uh, the circular business specifically in, in this uh, furniture, furniture sector. Okay, here are, I am not going deeper in, in these aspects, but we start first with the market hierarchies and networks, how the networks are placed in, in the three covenant as a third kind of a covenant model for economic and social activities, and how these networks are growing all the way, getting more market structure types inside them, as so larger corporations are using them, and, a, and, and then the hierarchical way, so that the relationships uh, and, and the authority is also put together, so that the networks are actually their own mode of organizing the economic activities. And here's one more very often used model to, to analyze networks, what they consist of, the so-called error model with actors, activities and resources, and looking at the actor bonds, active links and resource ties to understand how the network works, how it is established and how it is managed in a way. And uh, secondly, the drivers, we are going to look at what is behind the expansion of business networks, mainly outsourcing, globalization, etc and the structures of the networks and how you can look at networks as not only as a structure but the position <coughs> processes and also relationships. And uh, what to consider when establishing a business network, the goals, uh, what is the st uh, structure of the network, how to manage it and what is uh, the core value system behind, behind the, the network and then other factors and how to create the value system for business networks. So looking, taking this value system perspective, this is a, a about 20 years, more than 20 years of uh, development and, and use already in, in many, many networks and relationships. But uh, we have gone, we have been, or I have been developing this theory further on. So looking at the networks from the value system continuum perspective, this means that Basically, you have a high level of determination in the network or very low determination. And based on that, you can identify three different types of value production. So the core value production, uh, where, for example, the existing companies, large companies like IKEA, uh, Toyota, have uh, formed their uh, networks, very efficient supply networks and also distribution networks. The renewal value systems means that you make some enhancement on 
on your existing network or value system, like you introduce some part of, of circular economy type of uh, actions there. And finally, the, the creating the new value systems, if you establish a new or uh, start to use with the new technology, how it evolves to a uh, business later on. But that's the idea behind this. Uh, then this is a kind of a dynamic way how the companies change their value systems and how they uh, adopt it in, in different markets and market and markets and, and changes the market. So the underlying value system, how how it influences the management of a business net. So there's not one way to manage this networks, but you need to look at what you are looking after, either it is sensitive effectiveness or what or is it exploitation or exploration. So this figure shows about how the different capabilities, which kind of different capabilities are, are needed in different type of uh, nets and, and value value production systems. You know, what, what kind of uh, uh, metaphors you can use then, like a, or organize it or manage it like a symphony orchestra very strictly, or like a jazz band, you let the other people or other companies uh, uh, also play a role there. Somebody might start and then the next one starts to work, work on it further, like in a jazz band. And, and finally, a camp, chamber or the orchestra where you really focus on some specific issue to create and create a network for that purpose. So these are looked later in, in, in this unit. And finally, uh, having this kind of uh, grasp an idea where, where the company uh, now working and uh, want to work in, in a circular economy and in a business uh, or in a uh, financial business, are they, com are they like a focusing on market competition or market driving trying to be there in the forefront for, uh, for to change the existing or uh, markets or really making new ones. So all these three kinds of possibilities are available and you can try to use these networks uh, approaches to, to find out how to manage these uh, situations. Okay, the next one. Thank you, hello. Uh, I'm Nicolette Abidal. Um, I will, I'm a doctoral student here at the Brazil University in the School of Marketing and uh, Communication. And uh, today I will present the second unit of the module 4 of this project, uh, which talks about entrepreneurship for circular economy. Uh, the objectives of this uh, unit uh, are to uh, equip training with tools to develop business and new value propositions from opportunities presented by the transition towards a circular, a circular economy. And uh, at the end of this unit, uh, the participants should be able to recognize the features of entrepreneurship mindset, uh, to personally, to be able to personally implement tools and methods to develop and evaluate ideas of circular innovation, and to develop a business plan and strategy to implement within own sector. Um, starting with the basics, entrepreneurship itself is a very complex, uh, complex concept. We can find it in different cultures, different industries, different religions, and so on, uh, which can be quite a challenge when it comes to defining it. But in this um, project, we will uh, refer as entrepreneurship as an instance when enterprising individuals recognize an unsolved problem or an unfulfilled want or need which they the need they then proceed to meet and uh, this way they question the status quo and transform it into a future opportunity um, if we look at uh, entrepreneurship in europe um, we can see uh, I used this um, indicator called the Global Entrepreneurship Index, which basically looks at how countries around the globe are encouraging entrepreneurship. Um, for example, it looks at um, how stable the social, the political, and the economical environment is, uh, if the gover governance in that country is promoting 
uh, entrepreneurship uh, initiatives, if corruption uh, is an obstacle for those who want to become entrepreneurs and so on. And according to this uh, indicator, which was released last year, Europe as, Europe as a whole uh, had networking as a, uh, a major weakness, uh, which means that entrepreneurs usually are geographically um, isolated and they don't really uh, know each other. And uh, a major um, strength for Europe would be the start the startup uh, skills. Um, if we look particularly at how entrepreneurship can make a contribution to the circular economy, then we need to acknowledge that this transition um, requires a fundamental shift in the purpose of business and also in how value is defined by companies and society. And entrepreneurs in, in particular play a very important role in solving complex problems and circular economy is a complex problem uh, with uh, a high level of uncertainty and risk. Um, and they play this important role because they are able to produce value out of uncertainty. Um, transition to a circular economy will require uh, massive innovation and mindset changes that cannot be anticipated, thus presenting a, tr a tremendous entrepreneurial opportunity. Um, if we look at practical ways entrepreneurs can contribute to the circular economy, they can do so by creating new services uh, or uh, new products uh, or by uh, supporting uh, existing institutions through CSR, through stakeholder activism and so on. If we look at entrepreneurial motivation, we have uh, on one hand, the hard uh, and the soft influences. The hard influences can be, for example, regulations or economic incentives. Uh, the soft regulations are re referring to um, family or friend network that entrepreneurs have. Uh, if we look at uh, economic orientation, we talk about entrepreneurs who are mainly prioritizing uh, the financial aspect without actually considering any sustainability aspect. So uh, according to this uh, typology, we will have four uh, types of entrepreneurs, the visionary champion, the innovative opportunist, the ethical maverick, and the accidental entrepreneur. Uh, I also uh, have here an example from the project. Probably I should mention here that I don't have a special section with uh, case studies. Uh, they are uh, distributed uh, in the whole uh, content. Entrepreneurial skills are those skills that are needed to have in order to succeed in business. So we talk about skills necessary to start, develop, finance, and succeed uh, in, your own, in your own home enterprises. Um, of course, there are more uh, skills, but I decided to concentrate only on two. One of them uh, are the social skills, social perception, impression uh, management, persuasion, and influences, also social adaptability. And then um, this variety of balanced skills, which means that usually entrepreneurs are not experts in only one field. They tend to have uh, more uh, balanced uh, level of skills. And again, uh, here I will present two, uh, two, two um, examples from the project. Uh, if we talk about the entrepreneurial mindset, there are two uh, opposing uh, perspectives. The causal uh, mindset is starting with a specific goal, and uh, it says that um, if I can predict the future, then I can control it. And uh, the opposite, the effectual um, mindset, is that if I can control the future, then I do not need to predict it. Uh, again, uh, some examples uh, from the project. Um, in terms of uh, entrepreneurial uh, tools, 
I decided to concentrate only on one, which is the business plan, uh, and which can be defined as a guide or a roadmap uh, for one business that online goals and details how you plan to achieve those goals. Um, obviously, not only startups are needing the business plans, uh, we also talk about existing business who need to uh, constantly update it. Um, there can be different uh, types of business plan. The one page business plan is self explanatory, the lean business plan, which is mainly um, created for inside the company, and the external business plan, which is created, uh, for example, when uh, the company when the firm needs to apply for a loan or uh, is approaching investors. And uh, in the uh, text, I will also present the key elements of a business plan, financial plan, executive summary, and so on. Um, in terms of uh, challenges uh, and uh, barriers, uh, uh, firms who are already existing and are trying to transition to circular economy. I am providing some practical examples from the project. The challenges can have different natures. They can be cultural, financial, regulatory, technological, and other types. And um, uh, also in terms of drivers, um, also some um, uh, participants in the project uh, mentioned different uh, different aspects. For example, the strategic decision from the leadership of the company or the will to adapt business models to sustainability values. And I think that's the end of mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. <coughs> we now sh shift to uh, module 5. <laughs> Well, okay, this is the, the last version. Could you hear me? Sí? Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Juan Ortega, project manager of Amuebla, that is a few new to an upholstery cluster in the south of Spain. And we are in charge of the development of the model 5 that I'm going to present. Okay. Okay, I can, I can pass also. Uh, module 5 is sustainability in the circular furniture industry. Uh, after the several models that we have already seen about the circular economy and business model, we are going to... If you can pass the, the slide. Thank you. We are going now to see the tools and applications that are currently used to promote the sustainability in the circular furniture industry. Uh, okay, the structure of the module is divided in, in five units again. The first one is about the introduction to the co-design, as is the first step or the first application that could be implemented in, in the industry towards the, the sustainability. The second one is environmental management, where we will see the different standards that could be implemented in the in the industry, specifically specifically in the unit industry regarding not only environmental also also quality. The third unit is about uh, collabels, how to use the collabels in the unit products to show the to show the our interest in, in being more sustainable to the consumers. The four units is about tools that could be implemented to the circular company and we will see which kind of tool but most of them related with the life cycle analysis. And finally we will see some case studies already in the industry, all of them in, in regarding about uh, furniture or uh, upstate where this kind of uh, tools or eco-design or environmental management standards are already implemented. The methodology of the previous uh, modules are, is the same. We, it's, 
it will be the training length will be around 12 hours and it will be we will have a final assessment at the end of the whole module with 20 questions we will have also videos uh, infographics and the handbook and some the slides also as powerpoints the first unit the introduction to eco design okay the objective of this unit is to be familiar with the co-design concept, the vocabulary, and how to apply it in the new product. The student at the end will be able to apply this basic of eco-design in new future products, knowing the strategies and the steps necessary to implement it in the, in the company. The unit is then divided in, in different chapters. The first one is about general concepts related with the co-design. Later, we will see the evolution in, in the history, the different phases, the strategies to implement the co-design in the company, and the benefits and barriers of the co-design in the few new at the hour to be implemented in few new companies. Just an in short introduction to the co-design concept that is a systematic incorporation of environmental aspects into product design with the aim to reduce its, its impact through the entire life cycle. It is important to remark that the eco design is the first or the first step to be implemented in a company or at the hour to process a, a product in, in the first steps. Okay? <coughs> Thinking always in the to be more sustainable or to make more sustainable products. The second unit is about environmental management. And as I said, it's not going also only to only be involved about uh, environmental management, also quality and environmental certification. Uh, the student at the end of the of this unit will be able to analyze the environmental aspect of a unit company and implement the necessary changes to get uh, this kind of certification. Okay, we will start the units with uh, some introduction to the, the legal requirements of, for the future company and the general principles of quality and environmental certification. Later, we will see in the three final chapters the most important uh, certification currently in, for the industry, that is the quality certification, ISO 9001, the environmental certification, ISO for 2001 and EMAS, and the co-design certification, the ISO 14006. Okay, just an introduction to the fourth uh, certification that we are going to, to tackle in this, uh, in this unit. The ISO 9001 certification is what establishes the requirement of a quality manager system and it's the first certification developed and also it should be compulsory studied before the, the rest of the certification. The ISO 14001 is the best known standard of environmental management systems and specifies the requirements for an environmental management system to be implemented in the industry. The EMAS is, has the more, more or less the same objective as ISO 14001, but it's more complete. The, the difference is that it includes, as a requirement, an additional condition, such as the environmental declaration that has to be published. And finally, the ISO 14006 marks the guidelines for the incorporation of eco design in the manager system. This is the last uh, certification developed of these four. Okay, in the unit three, we will go to the communication sustainability through eco labels that has already been introduced in module two by Julio. But here in this unit, we will go indeed on the, and learn how to this kind of tool could be implemented in the industry. In the industry, and the most important eco labels for the future to product. Then the unit is divided, starts with the concept of eco-labeling, eco 
And in the second chapter, we will see the ecolabels of QD2 products and the classification, because we can divide the ecolabels in three types. Type 1, ecolabels of unitude, type 2, that is the self-declaration, and type 3, that is environmental product declaration. At the end, we will see also the difference between ecolabels and ecodesign, because some of, sometimes it could be confused. <coughs> Okay, the like label is, it's important to know that it's voluntary, it's a set of voluntary tools that try to stimulate the demand of products more sustainable to the consumer and could be classified, as I already said, in three types, depending on the kind of ISO standard that we are speaking. For instance, the type 1 eco label is the ISO 14024 and so on, as you can see here in the presentation. In the unit, we will see indeed uh, the different eco labels. I'm just going here to introduce um, some of the names. For instance, Type 1 are uh, the most famous eco label, uh, certified by an external body. We can see the European eco label, the Nordic Swan, the Blue Angel, and also we have the semi type 1. It's not, it, they have a, a little difference. As are the chain of custody, of custody of custody certification. We are speaking about the FC, FSC and BFFC. These two are uh, only attached for, for good. We have also the type 2, the environmental self-declaration. We don't need the certification of as a external body, but here we can we have the green dot or also the plastic recyclable. And finally, we have the environmental product declaration, as as we will see. Also, not only here, it's not in the same in the same unit. Okay, the four units is about the tools for the circular comp company that could be implemented, and the student will know what means they benefit. <coughs> sorry. They benefit and how to implement and evaluate the main sustainable tool for unit products. We are we will speak mainly about three different concepts: the product life cycle analysis, the carbon footprint, and the environmental product declaration. Also, at the end of the unit, we will see how to evaluate not only this tool, if not how to evaluate the, all the action implemented towards the circular economy in a company. We are speak, we will see here. Okay, we start with the introduction to sustainability tools. We have the three different tools, life cycle analysis, environmental product declaration, and carbon footprint, and at the end we will see the circular indicators. Okay, here about the sustainability tools, we start with the life cycle analysis that is a technique used to determine the potential environmental aspects and impact of a product or of a company, compiling the entry and exit register of the system. Starting from this point, we can go to the environmental product declaration, that is to analyze the life cycle of a material and offer this information for the decision making of, uh, of the customer. And one example of the environmental product declaration is uh, the food, the food, the carbon footprint. That is to calculate every greenhouse gas emission from companies, but weighted in ton of CO2. Then all of the the three tools that we will see in these units are always related with the life cycle analysis. Finally, we will see the circular indicators that are developed or has been developed to assess the circular economy. Uh, currently, most of the projects about circular indicators are related to evaluate a circular economy implementation in country or in a region by the public government. But there are also some projects uh, towards uh, evaluate the action or implementation of circular economy uh, actions in a, in a company. We will see the circularity indicator projects uh, developed by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation that um, create some standard on how to access the action implemented in a, in a company. 
Finally, in the last unit, in the last unit, we will see some cases studies. That's uh, just to know the implementation of the analyze tools and an application in the previous units. And we have also divided the different case studies in the different as we have already studied in the in the module. We will classify this in case study for the co-designs. We have three companies here. Case study of eco label, we will see four companies in this case, and case study of environmental management standards, we will see two companies here. And in the next slide we will see just this classification. Eco design, we will see Sankal, Arcadia Design and Mobles uh, 114. Eco label we have the Nordic Eco Label, the FC, FSC and PFC from different companies and environmental management we have EMAS and also ISO 9001. Okay, at the end you will have also the, the evaluation, the assessment. You're welcome. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we know uh, you will now go to module 6, which is also presented by University of Baza. Mm -hmm. Okay, hello again. Uh, now this module 6, it's about marketing uh, in the circular economy, especially here in the, in the furniture sector context. Uh, this module focuses uh, really on, on markets and markets are about customers, it's about, cons uh, about consumers and of course about competitors. So how make the difference between how to difference your products and how, how to difference your message, message to the customers or consumers. So what we introduce here are the cons basic concepts and practices and tools which can be used for, for uh, circular furniture product marketing or service marketing. So the module uh, consists of three units. The first one, circular product to market, looking a bit how the basic, uh, very basic marketing concepts uh, uh, can be used uh, uh, in this particular uh, context. Uh, the second one is about uh, value creation, specifically customer value creation. So what the customer is really focused on. Previous models we have talked about value creation in general or value creation from the company point of view, from the provision, provi provider point of view. And the third the unit uh, concentrates on consumption, uh, specifically here in the circular furniture consumption. So understanding the consumption cultures and what does it really mean for, for companies to, to go into the circular economy uh, and how to understand the consumers, how their sustainability aspect or self-identity can be, can be identified or found and used then. So uh, for the methodological point of view, the training length, I, uh, I have estimated nine hours, but now when uh, finalizing this, uh, I suppose I have to add a couple of hours more. And um, also I'll be changing these assessment ways, so I thought about it with quiz and uh, perhaps an evaluative pitch, like the, the trainees make a short video clip, uh, and, and the third one would be an essay, the third unit, but uh, probably we have to streamline those, those uh, in, in, in also in this module. So PowerPoint presentations and uh, infographics and, and some video clips uh, are, are then going to be used here. The first unit, uh, it's about uh, the products, uh, several products to markets, what is the real uh, question or real problems with uh, or how they differ from uh, traditional marketing or traditional product management, for example. So training aims to understand the marketing mechanisms to distribute this uh, circular product. So looking for knowledge in, uh, in marketing role and creating and developing a profitable business. So uh, when finalizing this unit, this training should be able to 
use those traditional marketing concepts acquire to acquire retained customers, uh, consumers, also our customers. Yeah. So very basic things are uh, focused at the very beginning of this uh, first unit. What is marketing? Uh, it's about, for example, profitable customer relationship, how to attract new customers, how to retain and uh, grow current customers, their customer, the so-called uh, share of customer wallet. Uh, the main issue here is actually that marketing is typically seen either as sales or advertising or marketing communication. So we want to establish the, the view, the real view of marketing that is not only sales and, and advertising. Uh, going deeper in these uh, very basic uh, concepts, uh, opening up the needs, wants, etc. What is marketing offering, value satisfaction, and also looking to markets as such, what the market are, are consisting of. Uh, in marketing segmentation is, is one of the cornerstones, so this module deals with, uh, with that aspect, uh, how to select the markets and how to segment them, how target marketing is, is uh, developed for the segments, and finally the position. So this model uh, deepens up the trainee's understanding in this area. And seeing the segmenting as a process, how to proceed from stepwise from, from the, uh, using the criteria and then ending up to how to how to position the products and services and even the company and the consumers and, uh, and customers' minds. Uh, the next one is that when doing the real marketing segment, uh, selecting these segments, what we need to do is uh, uh, provide a good marketing mix. So the traditional four Ps, product, price, promotion, place, how then turn to do four Cs like customer solution, customer cost, customer communication and convenience that will be posed here. And then specific questions are um, assigned for circular economy, from marketing point of view. And how, how the circular economy, uh, business models also, how they affect marketing, what marketing should do, how to, how to turn the market and find in the marketing when entering to, uh, uh, for example, recycling furniture or other, other products and taking the sustainability aspect in, into consideration. The second unit is about, about uh, the value creation, customer value creation, going deeper and in deeper on that, what does it really mean for the customer, not what the company expects, but what really the customers are thinking, what, how, what brings value to them. Uh, so defining strategies to engage customer in value creation, that is actually in, in a core focus. So that the customer, uh, that the trainee understands that the value creation uh, Basics for customer point of view, how, how it can be adapted in this context of circular economy. And uh, finally, hopefully, the trainee can apply then the marketing strategy and plan to meet customer needs in this uh, particular case sector. Uh, I'm not going deeper in here, but first we open up what customer value proposition is about, what are the promises, how the value is. Uh, uh, manifesting to customer and, and, and understanding that the customers are very might be very different as segments segmentation usually solves that you need to have different promises or uh, uh, value promises to customers in these segments. Uh, this is a good uh, framework for for example uh, how to how to use at the customer level at the con consumer level the same thing which uh, uh, everyone told about the value understanding value, creating value, and delivering value. So to understanding value, how it, it changes the customer needs and wants. Uh, creating value means what kind of offering the customer is expecting. And delivering value is about the business models, how the companies tackle with the certain segments or business units to, to meet the customer needs. And capturing value is about the early logic for the, for the company then. Uh, then uh, we look at the, the different value creation logics, uh, the three basic ones we actually uh, talked about a lot and, and in, the, in, in research focused at the moment, the traditional goods dominant logic which 
focus on, on the value in exchange. So the product company provides the product, the services, and, and the customer pays and the company gets money. Then the second one, service dominant logic, which is about value co-creation. So engaging customers or consumers to create the value. And finally, the newest one, uh, customer dominant logic, which means that, okay, it's about value in use. Companies can only be uh, facilitators. The customer itself creates the value. And how to make the right value proposition? We focus here on, for example, you need to uh, communicate that value proposition. Like I use here, Kone as a good good case that uh, dedicated to people flow. And Kone is a company uh, providing elevators and lifts, etc. And in that way, we should, for the furniture industry companies in a circular economy, see like a uh, well, well, good example here one chair is enough. So, looking around at this kind of uh, communication. Then there is one framework which has actually copied from business to business marketing, but it's, I feel that it can be really good, well applied to, to consumer markets as well. So, what you are providing to customers, all the possible benefits, favorable points of difference, how to different your, your products and services from the competitors, and that kind of resonating focus so that the the customer and the consumer will really engage and, and give the response and, and will be part of the value creation. As uh, why should you can the second row there uh, or the answers to the customer questions in the first place? Why should our firm purchase offering the favorable points? Why should our firm purchase your know, offering instead of competitors? And finally, what is the most worthwhile for our firm to keep in mind about your offering? And then this can be translated or transformed to the consumer market as well. Then a specific question is the circular economy, how to apply or adopt uh, this marketing concept in, in, in circular economy context. Really focused. Then the third unit is about consumption, circular uh, product consumption in furniture, in this case a post furniture industry. So the objective is learning outcomes is to, uh, to examine uh, how the trainee can examine uh, consumption practices in relation to the circular product and furniture. So uh, how, the, how the trainees can investigate consumers' buying behavior and teach distinguished consumption communities from a sustainable point of view. And uh, they should then be able to use the basic consumer marketing tools and understand consumption practices in, in this particular context. And here is another example about how to create this kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it, a brand identity. Here's a one uh, Finnish uh, furniture company, a very successful one for uh, more than 40 years have been successful in the, in the industry and that's, that's, that's quite uh, good. Uh, outcome for, for a family company. So how they tell their brand story and how the consumers are used as advocates. So engaging the consumers, that the consumers actually do this kind of peer-to-peer -peer type of marketing. And, and uh, what is the way of life behind the company? A furniture entrepreneur very deeply uh, engaged and focused on that. But building around this uh, nice and very interesting uh, brand identity of, and, and, and brand in general. So here we look at the consumer markets, consumer behavior, as a, that's a very often used uh, stimulus response model will be starting point. Then uh, looking the factors which are affecting consumer behavior, cultural, social, personal, and psychological. And here nicely we can also use the masses higher your needs, which probably what many of us already knows, but it's still the, perhaps the most often used in, in, in marketing, specifically in consumer marketing, understanding consumer behavior. Uh, disease and consumer decision, buying decision behavior, there are a couple of frameworks which will be opened up here in this unit, and, and they are, a, you can under, analyze, for example, uh, your market and consumer potential uh, customers by using this, these uh, matrices. Another uh, model which uh, will be open here and, and uh, 
where my body would be, where and how it will be, uh, can be used in, 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 in the circular economy and, and, and furniture industry context, it's the, about the means and chain model. And there is a good technique, for example, the laddering technique, where we can, uh, where we can uncover these kind of latent uh, factors affecting the, the consumers' choices, how they uh, perceive your offering or your product or service. So this will be uh, open up in this better in this uh, this uh, unit. Then uh, and finally we end up to the brands where we started. We end up to the brands. So how the brands create value to customer? What is uh, the thing behind the brand? The story and 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 the engagement of customers or consumers. That will be uh, the actually what's the final part. There's something missing. I think yeah. it doesn't show. Okay. Then finally, uh, I just found a very good workbook. Uh, which is uh, prepared to, for sustainable consumer behavior change, and this is a workbook which we can in, we can use or uh, adopt here in this uh, unit and find the whole model. I'm not sure how how to use and uh, because this is free for everyone, so we can modify it and uh, for this particular furniture context, the circular economic context. So that will be the work I'm now working on how to. How to perhaps make a good use of that. So that was the model six. Thank you. Thank you very much. And last but not least, uh, we should go to the last module presentation, which is module seven. Can you hear me? Okay, I think I have a problem with the camera because yes, yes, it okay. doesn't work. The door is yours. Okay. Um, I can move it. Okay. I'm Victoria Gomez. I'm project manager in, um, I'm representing the, the KIT, the Casco Institute of Technology in, in Germany. We are responsible of the module 7, supporting by advanced K embedding technology. Uh, the focus of the module is to provide an overview of the k enabling technologies as transversal tools in the, in the circular uh, economy. So, okay. The module 7 is made up of seven units. The first one is an introduction to the state of the art of cats within the circular economy. And each of the following five units uh, addresses a uh, specific technology such as uh, multi reality, 3D printing, 3D scanning system and digital collaborative platform. The methodology is as uh, the other models, um, the training length will be 12 hours and a half, and the, the, the model will be made up of a course book, six PowerPoints, six infographics, five video modules, one per technology, and one introductory video. And to evaluate the, the results, the, the knowledge of the students, we will prepare the 20 questions. For the, the first unit is the state of the art of aesthetic sketches within the circular economy. And the main objective of the unit is to show the connection between the circular economy and some of the key enabling technologies in the furniture sector. The knowledge is to understand, recognize, and analyze the, the use of sketches in the furniture sector industry furniture industry and its possible application to the, to the circular economy. The unit is uh, divided into two parts, one introduction and the state of the art of the of a specific case. Then we can say that the new circular economy proposed to close the life cycle of products and services um, and in, in this process, the, 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 the k enabling technologies contribute to the optimization of the circular economy in almost all the processes. The unit two is a multi-reality, and the objective is, to, is the acquisition of knowledge for the understanding of a multi-reality technology and its possible application with the circular economy in the furniture sector. The learning outcomes so the main uh, the knowledge is to recognize the use of augmented reality in the in the production chain. 
they do this, they divide it in six points. Augmented reality in circular economy, design and prototyping with augmented reality, the impact of augmented reality in the furniture sector, how to use augmented reality in service and repairing, and manufacturing and assembly. And the last point will be a case of a study. Um, some of the points that we can highlight in this technology are in manufacturing, complex production, assembly, and quality assurance and prototyping. Augmented reality is helping to speed up the entry prototyping process and it also helping manufacturing to minimize the, the use of scarce and increasingly costly raw materials. And also uh, visualizing the design uh, of the prototypes in 3D augmented, uh, with using augmented reality, manufacturing processes can be streamlined to produce highly sustainable outcomes. And also the technology enables hundreds of designers to do the job faster and with increasingly of efficiency. The unit number three is 3D printing. And the main objective of the unit is to, to obtain an overview of the possible uses of 3D printing in the furniture sector, focusing on the circular economy. We divided the unit in six points, in influence of 3D printing technology in the circular economy, potential and use of 3D printing, distributed production benefit, treat of 3D printing in circular economy and circular economy version of 3D printing. And also we have a case study uh, that is called Linger City. As a summary of the opportunities of 3D printing in the circular economy, we, we have identified the following. One, uh, local production. Uh, instead of uh, being uh, fabricate a product and send it in the international way, we can just send the STL file, obtain the STL file, and bring the, 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 the object in, in situ, saving on emission and transport energy. Remove waste because uh, 3D printing is an additive uh, technology, so only it only use materials uh, where it is needed. Design freedom with the design freedom that uh, 3D printing gives, it's possible to design and create complex components. Material characteristic is possible to create flexible and stiff characteristics with one material by modifying the geometry and recycling. Um, after the uh, after use the printed product, uh, after its economic use, if, um, sorry, we can reduce the material and, and recycle it for new printing. The unit four is uh, 3D scanning, and the, and the, uh, the main objective of the unit is to understand and discover its possible use in the circular economy both for the optimization of resources and in the quality control of the raw material. The knowledge, <coughs> the learning outcomes, the knowledge is to know and understand the process of 3D printing and the concept of reverse engineering and how it can be used in the furniture and boot sector. We divided the unit in three main points. Uh, we will explain what is uh, 3D scanning and its benefits for the furniture sector. And also we will show you a case study uh, from IKEA. Mm -hmm. 3D scanning can be used to improve the speed and accuracy of routine operation, foster fast delivery of uh, product movement rate, reduce human errors, and improve productivity, and also provides access to sites and locations that are difficult to human access. So, um, with uh, also uh, using a powerful uh, machine, it's possible to scan and difficultly reconstruct the internal characteristic of a lock, allowing the evaluation of the optimal packing solution in real time. And with this type of optimization, the material weight is uh, reduced. The unit number five is tracking system. And the main objective is to know the possibilities of the tracking system technology and its possibilities with the furniture sector. So uh, the, the, the main uh, knowledge will be to, to, to know the application of the furniture and put uh, in the book in, in the work. <laughs> the unit contents, we, we will focus the, the unit um, in, in the RFID technology. 
uh, and one phase of study. In the context of circular economy, uh, RFID will help uh, pragmatic flow to enable value recovery through the implementation of rare strategies that are used, paper, um, and manufacturing. The last unit of this module is a collaborative platform, and the main objective is to provide an overview of what collaborative digital platforms are and how they can be used, and how the use can uh, have benefit in the circular economy model. In this unit, um, we will talk about the digital revolution in the circular economy, digital collaborative platforms, and also the blockchain. And we will provide uh, at the last point in the phase of the study. So collaborative platform enables the creation of collaborative economy model whereby consumer can share, exchange, buy and sell use of new goods as well as service. And in terms of raw materials and resources we are using blockchain, blockchain will enable the stakeholders in the value chain to get an overseas of the world of product and raw material to first step, to first phase the geographical build up of deposits and to plan logistic and recycling activities for the specific material. This will result in a more, uh, in a more focused recycling approach, a higher quality quantity and quality of secondary raw materials and ultimate security European resources of critical raw materials. Um, this will be the module 7. So thank you. All right, well, <clears throat> thank you very much to you all. Thanks to the seven modules overview. Uh, and that, I think, will uh, conclude, I think, the, the webinar. Uh, what are the next steps? Basically, uh, we are currently working in the consortium of uh, finalizing the online platform. Uh, where all these modules, uh, videos, textbook, etc., etc., will be made available. So from October onwards, uh, you will soon receive information about when the when the modules are available for you to try and test and and, and start working on it. Uh, so I will invite you all to uh, get back to the firm360.eu website. Uh, in the fall after the early days, uh, so that you can start uh, learning more about circular economy opportunities in the sector and, and like strength, strengthen your knowledge, skills, and competencies uh, to become a circular economy fit. So, thank you all for uh, this two hours webinar. And